Hey everyone, welcome back to Interactive Cad and Tech. If you're using ChatGPT or thinking of trying it, today's video is going to be super helpful. We're diving into something crucial, how to write effective prompts and get the best responses from ChatGPT. Whether you want detailed answers or creative ideas or helpful explanations, knowing how to structure your prompts uh, can make all the difference. So let's get straight into it. I'm using ChatGPT on Mac OS and I'm going to be using it in Safari as well. First, why do prompts matter? ChatGPT is incredibly powerful, but it can only give an accurate response if it understands what you're asking. So think about having a conversation. If you're very vague, the, the other person might not grasp what you mean. The more context and clarity you provide in your prompt, the better the results. So for example, if I put into ChatGPT, tell me about dogs. So now I've got a vague answer about all dogs, where if I put in what, while it's still typing, what are the top five breeds of dogs? Just to give you a little example, it's like, keep writing about dogs' intelligence. So that is a very vague answer about all dogs, origins, breeds, diversity, roles in society. And all I've asked ChatGPT is tell me about dogs. So now I put what are the what top five breeds of dogs. It's asked me, it's coming in about it's Labrador retrievers, the temperament, the size, why they're popular. So that's a, a more specific answer. So can you see the difference? The first prompt is broad, so the responses could be anything. The second is more specific, so you are more likely to get the answer that you wanted direct, directly addressed to your question. So as in, what are the five breeds of dogs? So tip number one, be, cl be clear and specific on your instructions. Instead of vague questions like write about space, um, write something like a 200 word summary. on black holes will give you a more so it's telling me all about black holes instead of going what's about space where it'd be a very vague answer and it wouldn't necessarily be what you're after giving chat gpt clear direction helps it understand exactly what you need so here's another example um write a paragraph a three, so let's say write a three paragraph essay about the environmental impacts a three paragraph about the environmental impacts of single use plastics sorry about my typing So now I'm getting the length of the answer I want, the style of answer I want, and it's exactly about the type of plastic I want. So then if I put, tell me about plastics, so now I've got, I was interested here in single use plastics, but if you put tell me about plastics into chat GPT, it's not it's just telling me about plastics in general so the first one provides clear structure while the second one could lead to a, a more generic response so that's tip number one just be clear and specific with your instructions tip number two add context so for the best way to show this example is if you need to ask a complex question to chat GPT provide background information or extra details for example if you said explain machine learning So it's, it's given me a, an overview of machine learning and now it's diving into the more specific answer as we keep going down. But but if I say, well, it's just typing it out, um, explain to someone 
with no technical knowledge. It'll give you a more, can't spell today. It's great when you're doing a YouTube video. Um, it gives you a more dumbed down answer and I have no technical experience in that area. So it's giving me, it's like explaining about identifying dogs and, and, and computer data and pictures and text. So that's more of an answer of what I'd want if I wanted an explanation of machine learning, where this is a more complex answer. So that way, ChatGPT can tailor its responses to what you what you need. If you're obviously already studying machine learning, you'd understand this more than the dumbed down answer, which is a, is what I'd be after if I'm asking about machine learning. You can also um, add roles and perspectives. So, for example, if you put as a marketing expert. tell me the advantages of emails of email so now chat gpt is gonna pretend no you want the answer of the advantages of email from the perspective of a marketing expert so that's adding sort of roles and perspectives into your prompts. So next up, uh, use role playing or scenario based prompts. This is great for specialized responses. Let's say you're writing a historic novel and you need insight into the daily life of Rome. You could ask, imagine you're a Roman citizen. And then you could even put, describe a typical day in your life. So what this will do is, it's actually adding role playing and scenario into your prompt. So this, instead of saying, tell me about Rome, this is more specific for like if you're writing a novel or you've got an essay or, or schoolwork from the perspective of a Roman citizen. So describing ChatGPT will give you a more immersive answer, a more relevant answer when you set a scene like this. Another example is if you're a software engineer, you can ask it to explain the basics of JavaScript, for example, in a specific role. So it helps you be more accurate and specific, but I'm not going to type that in because you've seen me type enough. So tip number four, break down complex queries into smaller steps. So if you've got a question with multiple parts, ask them one by one for more clarity. So for example, instead of saying, tell me how to start a blog, break it down. So what are the first steps of a blog? Of setting up a blog, I'll put. And then it's actually, instead of you actually saying how to start a blog, it's actually telling you what the first steps, which is a lot better if you want to start the process. Then you could follow up with more information. So once you've read through that, what's the best blogging platform? So you're breaking down a very complex query of how to start a blog, but you're doing it in different sections. So what are the first steps of setting up a blog? Where do I put it? What's the best blogging platform? So you obviously WordPress, Wix, and it's giving you pros and cons, Squarespace, it's giving you pros and cons to each site that you'd host a blog on instead of just saying how do I start a blog so that's how you break more complex questions down into smaller steps tip number five specify an output format so for example 
if you wanted a step-by-step -step guide or a list or maybe a table or summary, ask for it directly. Instead of saying what's the best productivity apps, you can say list the top five productivity apps. And then I'm getting a list of one, two, three, four. Oh, so if, oh, you could put, I'll just let it finish. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that there were this many productivity apps. I'll just stop that there. So another thing you could put, for example, is give me the standard, I mentions of uh, M12 bolt. So now I'm getting the pitch, the head size, the length, the thread length, and it's all in list format and it's very wordy. So you could actually put, um, put, oops, put this in our table for me. So you can actually <coughs> change the format of your answer to what you want. So if you're asked directly, uh, specifying the format ensures you can get the responses that are ready to use, but it's obviously just analysing while it's putting it in a table. So there we go, and now it's actually put it in a table what I could actually use to either find it or check it against the design. So another great example is provide a bulleted list of pros and cons of electric cars. So you could actually, so I'm actually putting the format in. Bulleted list pros. So, for example, if I didn't put provide a bulleted list, I'm not putting the format in, and because I'm not putting the format in, um, it just gives me a paragraph of writing. Whereas now, I'm getting pros, and I'm getting it in bullet points, and I'm getting cons as well. Here's another great tip. Use follow-up prompts to refine your responses. Sometimes the first response might be close, but it might not be exactly what you're after. So starting a, instead of starting over, you can continue the conversation. So, for example, say, can you make the explanation simpler? Simpler. And now I'm getting a more broken down, simple pros and cons to EV to electric cars. So you can also do the opposite and say, could you expand on this point or just, and chat GPT will adjust it based on your feedback of its answer. The back and forth helps you zero out the exact information and style you're looking for. Right. I've been trundling up, talking along for a while now. So before we wrap up, let's quickly go over some common mistakes to avoid. Uh, don't be too vague. Your questions for chat GPT need to be specific to give useful answers. Avoid asking too many things in one prompt. Keep it focused and concise. And finally, remember chat GPT is imperfect and it can generate incorrect information. So always double check all the important details. And there you go, some easy tips on how to write effective prompts for ChatGPT. By following guidelines, you'll get much of your AI interactions, whether you're working on a project, learning something new, or just having fun. If you found any of these tips work well for you, drop them in the comments below, and I'd love to hear them. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit that notification button for more AI tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.